Hey guys, so I've been trying to find a good subject to write tutorials about and I found out that it's possible to access function uh, name and a bunch of other properties from inside the function without having defined anything else. Um, I'll try to demonstrate this. Uh, we'll need a parent function in order for all of this to work. So let's say we'll call some other function from here. Let's say um, we'll define this function later. Show properties. And later on, we'll just uh, keep calling it parent. So uh, we're going to call this function. And now we have to define show properties. Show properties in A, B, C. So inside this function, what I want to demonstrate is that it's possible to access all kinds of things. For example, inside this function, uh, JavaScript already have uh, has um, a object called arguments. So inside this argument, uh, we can actually find out the name of the function that's being called. So it's going to be this. In order to access that, there is an argument uh, property called e, and it has a name. So um, function name, so call e name, this is going to be equal properties. So this variable name uh, here, it's going to be equal this, because it's the function's name that's being called. So that's a really cool way to access the function that's being called, the, the functi function's name. Another thing is uh, func, um, it's inside arguments to uh, its length. So this will uh, output three because we have three um, arguments passed, uh, hopefully, uh, to this function. Uh, in other words, uh, there are three uh, parameters of this function defined. Uh, C. Had it been uh, A, B, C, D, E, this would have been five. So another interesting value you can access inside a function. Here's another one that's interesting is, uh, what is the name of the function that called this function? In other words, where is this uh, function being called from? And you can access that by um, show properties, type in the function's name, and uh, it has a caller attached to it, and name. So because this one is called from parent, this is uh, obviously this, that's what we're going to get. Now let's add something here. Uh, so we have five um, parameters here. Let's say somebody passed one, two, three into this function. And this one, um, there it, uh, it used to be, uh, there used to be a uh, property called parity. And it's no longer used, so it's actually stored inside the function properties length itself. So this will return three because only three uh, arguments were passed, even though we have five. That's argument length. That's how many we have defined. But uh, properties, uh, show properties length will return three. Had we passed uh, two arguments, it would have returned two. So how do we go through each argument and figure out what th what it is uh, without having to access them by their name, like A, B, C, D? We can um, write code to access them. Uh, it's a for loop. I uh, minus you know, less than arguments length. So this for loop will allow you to go through each uh, argument that was passed without um, 
practicing it by name. Sometimes it's uh, very useful when you don't really know what the names are. Uh, or it's the kind of a function that takes uh, arbitrary number of uh, parameters and you don't know uh, that it's passed until it is. So uh, inside this loop, name of the argument, uh, the value of the argument will be arguments that start in this array. So we'll get, um, well, we just pass one and two from here. So they will be in this array. These values are stored here. So uh, yes, you can access them with A and B, but they will also be enumerated in arguments array. And finally, if you want to output the actual body of the entire function, you want to output this in string format. Uh, you can you can create another variable and specify uh, it's in arguments. Call e again to a string. So this will translate this function that's being called into a string. So what you will have here return is the string representation of this entire function. So it will be this entire thing, including the function keyword, um, uh, function's name, and uh, parameters. So it's probably not used a lot, but if you're um, writing code that needs to know these things, it's really useful. So you don't have to access them by name. Uh, they will be available through all of these objects and properties. Well, I hope you found this uh, tutorial useful, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.